Hi, this is Eric Sloeve over at NTPro.nl and in this presentation I'm going to show you vCloud networking explained in 32 animations and only one slide. The PowerPoint magic is done by my fellow VCI, Tuka Korhonen from Finland and I'm doing the voiceover, Eric Sloof over at NTPro.nl. So first let's start with our PowerPoint magic and uh, let's go to the first slide. The first slide is completely blank and when you are going to connect networking to your vCloud environment you are probably connecting an external network and it can be internet or your local LAN or whatever and this external network will be connected to the external provider network. This is the entry point of your vCloud environment. So the provider external network can be used by several organizations and all the organizations can connect to the provider external network. When you are creating a provider external network, you have to assign an IP range to it and you can create a static pool within the vCloud director. These addresses are handed out to virtual machines that are connecting to the provider external network and it can be done by customization. So when a virtual machine is powered on, the IP address is automatically configured uh, within the virtual machine in the VApp and then the virtual machine can communicate to the outside world. So let's see what this means for our vSphere environment. When we are creating a provider external network, it's always backed by a port group. So this port group is created on a distributed virtual switch and this port group will function at, as, as, as the gateway to our vCloud environment. So the next step we will do, so you see the, v, the, the port group is created right here and the port group is connected to uh, the external provider network. So the next thing we're going to build up is an organization virtual data center. So an organization can contain multiple organization virtual data centers and uh, a vCloud administrator can create an organization network and the organization network can be connected to the provider external network. So first of all, let's create an organization and within the organization, an organization virtual data center. And then let's create a pool. A network pool will function as a place where port groups are handed out. And port groups can be used by VM networks that are fenced with uh, a V-Shield Edge device or by organization networks that are also fenced with a V-Shield Edge device. Uh, in either case we need to create an isolated network and port groups can be used to isolate those networks. There are three different types of isolation. You can create port groups based on VLAN IDs, on vCloud NI isolation or you can create port groups manually and add them to uh, a network pool. There's also a fourth new uh, uh, feature available in the near future and then you can create for port groups based on VXLAN uh, provided by a Nexus 1000 V. So let's take a look at this pool. This pool is going to create an organization network and an organization network uh, once it's a routed connection will be uh, uh, it can be configured with a static address, in this case it's 192.168.110.220 and then a VShield Edge device is automatically deployed. So every virtual center needs to have access to a VShield Edge device and once somebody uh, is creating a VAP network or a routed organization network, then a VShield Edge device will be automatically deployed. So in this case we have a VShield Edge de uh, device fencing an organization external network uh, from the provider external network. This is step one. This is the network that can be used by your VApps. So the internal side of this network is configured with IP address 192.168.11 and the external address is uh, configured with an address from this pool and this pool starts with 10 10 10 11 to 10 10 10 25 so the first address that is handed out automatically to this V-Shield Edge device is 10 10 10 11. The next step we're going to take is take a look at which port group is used 
by this V-Shield Edge device. So every V-Shield Edge device has two virtual network adapters and this V-Shield Edge device is using this port group to connect to the provider external network. The next step we're going to take is create some additional pools and those pools uh, can be used and can be handed out to the virtual machine. So these uh, VLAN IDs are within this pool and these VLAN IDs will be handed out to networks that we are going to create in this organization VDC. So let's take a look at the first address. The first address is handed out in this pool to the inside address of the VShield Edge device that is fencing the organization external network from the provider external network. And this is an isolated network running on 192.168.110.220. When we are deploying a VApp, and the VApp contains several virtual machines, and we have a direct connection VApp, then the VApp is connected directly to the organization external network, we don't need to deploy a V-Shield Edge device. V-Shield Edge devices are only deployed when we do routing or firewalling. So when you put fencing or nothing uh, uh, on, on the VApp, then a V-Shield Edge device is deployed. With the direct connection, we don't need to, because this V-Shield app is connected to the organization external network. It will get its IP addresses from the organization external network. So it starts with 110 and the next one is 111. When we are going to create an organization network with a direct connection to the provider external network, which is also possible, then we also don't need uh, a V-Shield Edge device. And we are going to deploy a second VApp. The second VApp contains two virtual machines. And both virtual machines are connected to a routed connection from within the VApp. The routed connection is configured with static addresses 192.168.210 to address 20. So if we are using a routed connection in a VApp, we have to deploy a V-Shield Edge device. This V-Shield Edge device can be used to, to, to fence this VApp from the direct connection. The direct connection is connected to the provider external network. This inside address is 192.168.21 and the outside address is coming from the provider external network and in this case it's already counting on address 12 because 11 is used here and 12 is the next address which will be used here. So this V-Shield Edge device is connected to the port group provider X1 and the other side, the inside, is connected to a newly depo deployed port group, VLAN ID 11, within this VLAN pool. So this machine will get address 192.168.2.10 and 192.168.2.11. So the last network work we will create in this slide is the organization internal network. And the organization internal network has two ranges, a static range 192.168.310 to 20 and a DHCP range 192.168.350 to 80. So in this case we will not connect this network to uh, the external network direct connected or the routed connected or the provider external network. We just have an internal network. This internal network is connected to a port group. It is backed by VLAN ID 12 port group and the virtual machines within VApp3 can only commu communicate among each other and not with the outside world. So in this case, we have to deploy a V-Shield Edge device. It's done automatically by the V-Shield manager connected to your vCenter server, but it's not connected to the outside world. Uh, the IP address that is configured on this machine uh, when it's configured with DHCP is 192.168.350. So that's cool. This is part of the new vCloud deploy and manage training. And I'm in the middle of the delivery of this training and I can say that is one of the most awesome trainings I've ever delivered. Hope to see you in my classroom. Eric Sloof is signing off and kudos to Tuka for creating this awesome slide. Bye bye.